Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. Well, welcome back to Right on the Money, and Happy New Year to you and yours. I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator. In this segment, we're talking about saving money from our cash flow with Tommy Hagen, a nationally recognized retirement speaker and best-selling author. Well, once we've created cash flow, Tommy, I'm ready to go. But I went out there, you know, I got my cash flow now, and I went to my bank, and I saw the one-year rate. I went out to, I said, forget my local bank. I went out to bankrate.com, hoping that it would be better with some place that doesn't have brick and mortar. And those rates for one year, three year, five year, Tom, they're terrible. Yeah, well, look, if, if you want short-term rates, they're going to be low. But there are other places you can invest your money. You can put it into your 401k. You can put it into a Roth IRA. You can put it into mutual funds. You can put it into annuities. There's a lot of different places you can put that cash flow. But a lot of people are wondering, you know, how, can I save when I'm when I'm still in debt? Should mm -hmm. I pay off the debt? Should I save? And there's there's some different strategies mm -hmm. there. So here's some ways that you can save and get out of debt. Mm -hmm. Okay. The first thing you want to do is you want to list what all your debts are. Get get them all out. What are the debts? How much is it? What's the interest rates? What's mm -hmm. the minimum payments? You know. Then you want to figure out how much can you pay. And that's where you got to cut that spending. We talk about it every mm -hmm. segment, but you got to reduce your spending. And if you can work a part-time job for a while, I mean, that's there's nothing wrong with getting another job to help pay down your debt for a mm -hmm. while. Um, how much can you afford to pay? Set a debt-free date. Have a goal. I want to be debt-free by such and mm -hmm. such a date. Um, avoid using your credit cards while you're doing this. Try to minimize going into further debt. You want to keep a, a small cash cushion. You want to add to your 401k, especially if you're getting a match. I think that's mm -hmm. a big point. It is a huge. When you think about your 401k, people say, Steve, I have did some of the things you guys have talked about. I've got some free cash flow now. And I'm saying, are you maximizing, at least on your 401k, up to your employer's match? If you're doing that, this is a deduction in the hand. You're getting an extra money from your employer. And some people, I have to say, really, that is a great play to go. And I like the 401k because most of them now are contributions. So they're driven by you, the participant. Right. right. And whether the market goes up or down, you're adding money. And, and with that match, I just want to say this. If you're... If you're taking up 4% of your pay and they're matching it with 4%, that's a 100% rate of return. And you're talking mm -hmm. about low interest rates. Don't give up that match. That would be a key thing that you want to keep doing, even when you're getting out of debt, because that's basically free money. And if you don't put the money in there, you're not going to get that, okay? Um, you can try to ne negotiate lower rates with some of the credit cards, and some of the places will work with you to mm -hmm. get lower rates. Sometimes you can take out a home equity loan uh, to, to move the debt over to home equity because home equity loans mm -hmm. are lower. But again... That's risky if you keep charging up other things. Mm -hmm. It's okay if you then pay that down because mm -hmm. some of that can some of that can actually be tax deductible debt, you know, mm -hmm. instead of taxable uh, debt. You 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 don't want to absorb all your raises into spending. So if you do get pay raises, if you do get promoted, mm -hmm. take some of that new money and put it towards paying off debt and mm -hmm. saving. You don't want to mm -hmm. spend it. Well, when you talk talked about home equity loan, I've heard you talk. We've been on the air before when you've talked about. Being careful how you use this, especially in right. retirement. Right. So I think people sit there and say, well, you know, I have, and by the way, when you see consumer debt averaging between 30 and 40 grand, and we're not talking about your house, we're not talking about your right. car, if you're looking at 30, 40 grand, and then you go to your home equity and say, wow, I'm going to knock it down with that, and I have to be so disciplined not to go back to my plastic, right? right? I mean, right. so then I take out the home equity loan, and remember, I have to write checks about this. I, I'm, I'm not going to let that ride. So it can help the arbitrage between the interest rates in your cards and the interest rate charge in your home, it could be a great deal for you. It can if you're disciplined, mm -hmm. you know, and it all comes down to that. You know, you've got to get your own personal habits under mm -hmm. control. And what happens is people just want it now and they want more mm -hmm. and they want this. And you just, that is that is a way to ruin. And if you if you can get your, mm -hmm. your habits mm -hmm. under control, you can use some of these tools because that's mm -hmm. all any of these things are is tools mm -hmm. that can be used properly or they can be used improperly. But if you use them properly, it can help you. You know, Tommy, I want to ask you about this. A planned obsolescence, it seems like, I, it seems like I'm switching out iPhones every seven to eight months. 
So it's not even the day. It's like, oh, the newest thing. And somehow I can't live with the old iPhone. So I'm popping for the bigger screen, higher resolution, much more things in it. And I'm not just talking about games. I mean, really quality technology. Yeah. But it seems like it's either planned obsolescence or the technology is moving so fast. Okay. I can't keep up with it. So do what I do. I don't get the brand new iPhone right away. I'm, I'm like one model behind it. Because mm -hmm. of that, I get it for less. And mm -hmm. I can live without the latest, greatest for you know 12 mm -hmm. months or 18 months. Because the technology today is so great. It's so much better than mm -hmm. it was five years ago that, you know, and same with golf clubs. You know, I, I go up and play golf with guys. They got the brand new golf club every year. I only buy a new golf club if it hits the ball farther or straighter than my current one. And mm -hmm. I won't spend the money if even if it looks nicer, even if I think, mm -hmm. oh, my buddies will say he's using a ping that's, you know, eight years old. I don't care if I can mm -hmm. hit it farther than them. I don't care. I want to hit the ball straight mm -hmm. and I'm, I don't buy new stuff just to have new stuff. Well, Tommy, I noticed that you, uh, on one of your lists that I've heard you talk about before, people come into money, maybe inheritance. Maybe they won the lotto, or some kind of tax windfall. refund, tax refund. Yeah. And they burn through. I mean. We're trying to use our money tastefully. We're trying to be good stewards of the economics that we have. So when I get a windfall, I should be looking at my debt reduction and then putting money into savings, not into consumer. Isn't it true? I mean, I just saw, we, we talked about this on another show where a person got a million dollar death benefit. They thought that was great. They're going to go out and spend, they're buying the new car and they yeah. thought they're going to live on the rest. Right. They're not going to live on the rest. No, in a 1% interest rate environment, a million dollars is $10,000 a year. You're not rich on ten thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. People have no idea, mm -hmm. and and they have no idea what they're going to need in retirement. They have no idea well, how much life insurance they need. Mm -hmm. They're all underinsured because I think a million dollars is a lot. No, a million dollars is ten thousand dollars a year. You need to have at least a million dollars of life insurance for every fifty thousand of income. People don't think that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to save up how many million for retirement if mm -hmm. we're in a one percent interest rate environment. People have no idea, and so they think that you know they they come into fifty thousand or hundred thousand mm -hmm. that it's a lot of money. It's not a lot of money in today's economy. Mm -hmm. And what you got to do is you got to get out of debt so that once you're out of debt, you can supercharge your savings. Mm -hmm. See, we want to get out of debt so that we can take all the money that we were paying off debt and put that to pay ourselves. See, right now, people are working for their money. And what you want to do is have your money work for you. Mm -hmm. That's the key. You stop working for money. Start having your money work for you. And you can do it if you're wise, if you're disciplined, if you get out of debt. You can do it. Well, Tommy, I've been looking at, again, back to back, bankrate.com. I mean, for my short-term money, you know, if you're getting there for a year, you might get a point, point and a quarter, maybe, maybe, for a one-year CD. But I've also noticed that five-year annuities, deferred annuities, which a lot of our viewers uh, and, and listeners, they go, I'm not really sure I, I know about that. Some of those five years are paying 275 to three. Yeah, and I mean, you can even get into variable products that can pay more than that. Now, that's got risk, though. And, yes, but but they're but if, you, if you're an annuity, then they'd have guarantees against that risk. Mm -hmm. So so you've got to look at the whole package, or you can do what I do. 100% of my new purchases are going into deferred income. For retirement. I, yes, I'm locking in income because I've figured this out, Steve. My retirement is all about income. It's not about assets. I don't even care what the market does. I don't mm -hmm. care what my assets are. It's all about income. So I'm trying to load up with as much guaranteed lifetime income as I can. And I've got some starting at 60. I got some kicking in at 65. I got some kicking in at 70. I got some more kicking in at 75. And I buy them in a ladder to ensure I will have increasing income for the rest of my life. Well, that's that's kind of a new mantra because the old mantra, you know, buy term, invest the difference. You're kind of buy income and invest the difference. Yeah. I mean, it's all about income. And that buy term and invest the difference, that was a loser strategy from day one because what happened is buy, people bought term and they spent the difference mm -hmm. and they bought term and they lost the difference. Mm -hmm. Almost every one of those people would have been far better off, far better off if they would have bought a whole life or a you know some type of permanent life insurance policy. They would have far more cash today than what they do when the mm -hmm. buy term and invest the difference. And then they wind up in retirement with absolutely no life insurance. Mm -hmm. There's an entire generation that's going into retirement with no life insurance. Mm -hmm. They were told their house would be paid off. They'd have a pension. They, mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't need it anymore because they'd have so much money. Well, that, none of that's true. Mm -hmm. And that now they got no life insurance. And so now they live a just in case retirement mm -hmm. because they're denying themselves a retirement because they think they got to leave their kids some money. Well, when I think about the number one demographic for re for actual life insurance sales is happening with the seniors. They're buying final right. expenses. Right. They're buying insurance for the first time. You know, and remember, we have to have health issues. Right. They got to protect against Social Security mm -hmm. benefits. They, they want to leverage charitable giving. They want to help their grandchildren. Mm -hmm. I tell people, don't give your kids money. Leave them life insurance because mm -hmm. you can leave them so much more. Yeah, when we're thinking about putting money aside, we've created a cash flow now. We're looking at our short-term money. Maybe we're using a, a CD or we're trying to get six months out so that in case anything 
happens to our job. We have six months kind of a cushion before we ha actually have problems. I'm also looking at, you know, a lot of us have HSA accounts from our medical accounts. I mean, there's money in there for medical, and that could be a huge issue. And again, your match issue. Man, if your, client, if your employer is matching your 401k, you should at least put money up to the match because you said that's free money and it's a hundred percent return if if you did nothing else right and then one last thing steve that we could talk about to some future show is that you know there's not just diversification when you're investing money there's tax diversification because mm -hmm. see you don't want to have all your money going into pre-tax you don't want to have it all going into your 401k you want to have some money going into some type of tax-free like a roth ira mm -hmm. or permanent life insurance where you can pull money out tax-free and that's a that's a whole nother show well that's our show for this week i want to thank tommy hagner for being my guest but before i go Remember what the good Reverend John Wesley once said, make all you can, give all you can, save all you can. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week right here on Right on the Money. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting. We have the interviews you use.